All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to describe how to make a basic program from the very beginning, okay? So I'm in the NC of the control and I'm in the part programs and the very first thing I want to do is find a way to make a new program. So you'll notice over here on my vertical soft keys that I don't have anything that says new program. So you do have a button here that switches from one page to the next. So generally speaking, if you don't see what you're looking for, it's on the second page. Up here at the top, you'll see that it says new program, open a program, mark, copy, paste, cut, the same kind of verbiage that you're used to hearing. I want to create something new. So in here it says, okay, do you want to make a new directory? Do you want to make a shop mill program, which is conversational? Do you want to make a G code program, right? What I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a directory and in there I'm going to make that directory and I'm going to name it videos. Okay, when I push OK, you're going to see now that I have a directory called videos. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new program and I'm going to put it into that directory. So I'm going to say, hey, I want to select new again. This time I'm going to stick with shop mill because I'm going to show you the conversational part of the control. Okay, so from here I have to name that program too. Something I should tell you is it's not all the time, but it is quite often that the Siemens product does not want you to use spaces. It's a really good idea right out of the gate to use, to use underscores instead of spaces because there's some places it's going to argue with you if you do it that way. So I'm going to call this first one just basic underscore one, two, three, okay? I'm going to hit my input button and now you'll see that it's creating a program and it switches to a page here that they call the program header. And what happens in here is it wants you before you do anything else to describe the piece of material you're about to cut. So at the top it's telling me I'm working in inches, I can switch that to metric, right? Um, it asks me about the clamping and it says the clamping is on a table. If you notice there's two types of clamping in here right now. The other one is A, which is really fourth axis where I'm doing a rotary to hold the part, right? So clamping is how you're holding your part. I'm going to switch that back to the table because we're keeping this simple. It's asking me which work offset we're going to use. We're going to use G54 because that's the one we set up in a previous video. And then it's asking me what's the blank like? So you'll notice here also if I select the blank, it says this could be a cylinder, it could be a piece of pipe, it could be a block with the center in the middle, it could be a block with the center somewhere else, it can be multi-cornered or none of the above. We're going to keep this on block centered, but one other thing I want to point out is that it always remembers the last part that was made in the control. So whoever used this last used a block that has zero in the center and it was two inches by four and roughly three quarters, right? So again, like I showed you in earlier videos, it shows you animation and pictures all the time. So when I select width, it changes and says, I need to know how big the part is in the Y axis. If you recall, our block was six by six. So I'm gonna say six by six. And then it asks me this question that says HA. Keep in mind that some of their terminology is a little bit different than ours, but because of the pictures, it's pretty easy to follow. HA is the top of the part, right? You'll also notice that when I touch this, a little window pops up right here that'll give you a hint on what it's for. In this case, it says initial dimension. Well, when we set up the part originally, we left 20 thousandths on the top of the part to be removed so we have a flat surface. So what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna just change that to 20 thousandths. That's the top of my part. And then how thick is my block, right? It's a one inch piece I could put in, you know, nine, uh, 980 if I wanted to, but I'm just going to say one inch, right? So minus one. Okay. And now it's asking me which plane I'm working in. I'm working in G17, which is the XY plane, so I'm not going to change that. RP, if I touch that, you'll see that's your retraction plane, right? And so the retraction plane is just how far it's like a safety kind of a dis distance for when you're moving around the control. So I've got it set at one inch above everything, which is more than safe enough. And then what they actually call the safety distance here, right, is going to be how far above the part when I'm changing from full speed into a machining speed. So at a hundred thousandths, I've got enough room right here above the part when I move from hole to hole and things like that. And then down here, it asks me how I want to machine. 
So when I switch here to where it says machining sense, it says you either want to use down cut or up cut. That's the German's terminology for climb mill or conventional mill. You can tell by the animation that down cut is climbing because the tool is climbing into the material, right? If I change it to up cut, you'll see that the tool goes in the opposite direction. So this is just a general idea on how you think you're going to be programming. I'm going to leave it on down cut because I like the climb mill. And the last one is how I want to retract. So if I've got a part that's got multiple levels, I can set it where that hundred thousandths goes above each level. Or I can say, hey, you know what, just go to the retraction plane or not. So see that optimized? I just stay along whatever surface I'm at. And retraction plane here makes a lot more sense. It's a little bit safer. I'm just going to clear everything. So once I've answered all those questions, I push accept. From there, you'll see now that I've got a program header, and now I've got can cycles, a lot like the prototrack in what I want to machine. So I can do drilling, I can do milling, I can do contour milling, I can do various operations. Uh, I have a simulation button here, it'll show me how it works. I've got an execute button that sends it to the run mode. Over here, I've got um, all of my editing features like copy and paste and cut. Um, one thing I want to point out, mark. Mark is like highlight, think of a marker, that's what it's for, okay? So let's say the first thing that I wanna do is some milling. When I select milling, it says, okay, are you face milling? Are you making a pocket? Are you making a multi-edge part? Are you cutting a slot? Are you thread milling? Are you engraving? What are you doing, right? So in my case, I need to face mill the top of that piece part. So face mill is the one event that automatically looks at what you programmed in your part and figures it from there. So you'll see up here at the top it's saying select the tool you want to use. This is the tool that was last used when somebody did a face mill. I don't know if it's the right one, so I'm going to go to select tool. It takes me to my tool list. I'm going to find my facing tool and say OK. The next thing it wants to know is my feeds and speeds. So I can program either in inches per minute or surface footage. I can program in RPM or thousands per tooth, however I want to do that. Right now it's set at 30 inches a minute. I'm going to leave it at that. And then it's at 2000 RPM. I think that's fine too. Where it says machining, it's asking me, am I rough or finished machining? But the way they do that is there's a set of triangles. You see three triangles, that means you're finished machining. I'm going to show you the other one, which would be a single triangle, which means I'm going to have multiple passes to cut this part. I'm going to leave it on finished machining. And next it's asking me the direction, right? So the direction you see here from the animation is how it's going to remove that material. It's moving in the x-axis, moving back and forth, right? I could change that to a lot of different features, right? So if I only wanted to machine in a certain direction, this way it only cuts in one direction and rapids back in the other. I can change to machining in a serpentine, but in the y-axis if I want to and so on and so forth. I also have walls I can build if there's a place that I don't want to go over that limit and describe where that wall is so that it only machines everything, say, to the right of it. I can turn them on and off. From here, it's saying, what's the size of your block? And you'll notice that my dimension's already in there. So since zero's here in the center, I'm going negative three in both directions to this corner. That's where that corner is it's describing. Z0, there's the 20 thousandths I want to remove. The six inches here and here are both incremental, which means they're coming from here, how far to get over there, which will be six inches in both directions. Z1 is what is my final dimension after I do my cutting. So what I'm trying to do is take that 20 thousandths off the top of the part, and when I finish, Z0 will be the top of my part. This is the angle of the part and the angle of how I want to machine. Okay, so if my part was in there at 45 degrees, I could change that to 45 degrees so it cuts along the plane of the part. This is the amount of step over that I'm using. You'll see here the DXY is on the illustration. So if I wanted to do that at 90%, I could just change it accordingly, okay? And then UZ is your finished dimension. So if I wanted to do a rough cut and then leave four thousandths. I could put four thousandths in there and it'll take two passes. One to rough it out, one to finish the last four thousandths. In this case, this really is a finishing move, so I'm just going to leave it where it is and push accept. So what I've got now on my screen is my program header, 
and the first operation that I told it to do. Now to see what it's going to do and how it's going to work, if I push simulation, it's going to draw me apart. And I can look at this either from the top or from a 3D view. I think it's easier from a 3D view to capture what's about to happen. So there's my tool machining the part in the y-axis, stepping over and it's done. Pretty easy to understand, right? If I either push simulation again or just go back to edit, it takes me to where I was. It's important to point out that whenever you're creating something else, you have to be highlighted on the last thing you did. You can't program from where it says end of program. So if I was making a simple part that I just faced off and now I wanted to cut a square pocket in this part, I would go back to milling, create a pocket, and it's asking me what the shape of that pocket is. It's either a circle or a rectangle. I'm going to make a rectangular pocket. First thing I want to do is choose the tool I'm going to use to do the work. So I go to my half inch end mill, say OK. I come in here and tell it what I want my feeds and speeds to be. That's at 5 thousandths per tooth and at 550 surface footage, which is fine. If I wanted to change them, I have the ability to do so there. In here, it's telling me my reference point, which is where is the center of the pocket and how are you determining your dimensions, where are they coming from. So I'm using the center as my dimensions, but it could be in any corner that I described from. What am I doing machining wise? I'm doing rough machining, but it could be finished machining or finishing the wall or doing a chamfer. So I'm gonna leave it on rough machining. This is a single position pocket, which means I could multiply this pocket and put it in different areas using a pattern. But for right now, I'm just doing one pocket. The center of the pocket is in the center of my piece part. So X and Y are just gonna be zero. Z zero, it's, or Z zero is asking where I begin the machining. I'm gonna start at the top of the part. So zero is correct. And then this is the width of the pocket in the Y axis. So let's say that I want to make this uh, two and a half inches. And I want to make it four and a half inches in length. And then this would be whatever I want my radius to be. I see there's an error in there, but that's OK. I'm just going to change that to a quarter inch radius in the corners. This is the angle of my machining. So since my part is square with the X axis, I would leave that at zero degrees. This is the depth of my pocket. So again, all my pictures show me exactly what I'm trying to tell it. So I want to go a half an inch deep, minus 0.5. This is the percentage of step over for my cutter. I think that in this case, I could either go percentage or by a inch value, right? Or a metric value if I was in metric. But I'm going to just say, hey, you know what? Let's do this a 20%, all right? Then my DZ would be my depth of cut. So in this case, it's at 100 thousandths. Let's say that we're going to do it at 1 eighth. Then the XY version for a finish cut, they call UXY. You can tell from the picture, it's talking about the finish cut on the wall, right? So if I want to leave 10 thousandths, I would just put 10 in there. The UZ is the finish cut for the floor. We're going to leave that at zero. And then insert, insertion, how do I want to get the tool into the material? As you can tell right there, it's vertical. I can change that to either helical or oscillating. I'm going to go to helical. And once I select helical, it wants to know a little bit more information. So this is asking me what my depth is going to be per revolution. And it's also asking me what the radius is that I want to move around as I come into the material. So I have it set at 50 thousandths per revolution in a 3 eighths diameter uh, uh, radius, I mean, for doing the cutting. And then when I push input here and hit accept, you're going to see when I go to simulation now that it's going to go through the whole process again. Now in simulation, you can control how fast or slow it goes. But so you can follow along, I'm going to leave it where it is. That would be under program control to speed it up or slow it down. So it's going to change to my half inch end mill. It's going to helix into the part. Start machining the pocket. Pretty easy to understand exactly what it is and whether you did it right or wrong. For each cut, it's going to show another cut process through here. So now I'll show you the program control. 
I can override and make it faster. I can make it slower if I need to see it a little bit better. I can even go to override max and if I do that, it happens really quickly and you'll see just what basically the completed part, okay? So I'm gonna just slow that down a little bit and then I'm gonna hit the back key here and from here I'm gonna go back to edit, okay? So that's a basic idea on how to make a pocket starting from describing the material to what am I doing? I'm milling, what kind of milling? It's a pocket, what kind of a pocket? It's a rectangle, then describe the rectangle. For those of you guys who are proto track guys, this is very, very easy to make the transition to because a lot of the questions are the same. And even though the terminology is a little bit different, because of the illustration and the animations, it makes it very easy to follow along. As you can tell, I'm making this up as I go along.